Gemini. I don't know why I feel excited for Gemini. Is there something really exciting happening for you? I know when Gemini in my life, it was quite a bit going on. Probably pretty excited. I'm going to use the animal deck because I feel like your energy is kind of... This is the elephant in reverse. Not real big, just real exciting. Okay. There's starfish. Like a big star. Um, it's like you saw some type of big star streaking through the sky. Like that's the kind of excitement that I got. When I first started your reading, I was like, no way. Like that, you know? Are you like in awe? Shock and awe? Something about you maybe feeling kind of small. And, you know, when I see, look up at the night sky and I, I just kind of get to actually take a moment and appreciate how far away those big ass balls of fire are in the sky in comparison to the sun. <coughs> and I'm saying that because of this little fire right there. This is like looking up in the night sky, realizing how deep the sky really is. Feeling kind of small and like in awe, like, wow. And then also you might have seen some shooting stars or something like that. Like some celestial event that is not all that common. Yeah, there you go. It's like an eclipse of a moon. I don't know why the hyena, the hyenas laugh half the time, but they're not. I don't know why people say hyenas are laughing. That's just the way they sound. So, you know, Fran from The Nanny. You know how she talks like this? Okay, well, that's just the way she talks. She's not laughing in a specific way. That is her laugh. That's the thing about hyenas. Like, some people perceive them to be laughing and others perceive them to be, like, just talking, making noise, you know? That's kind of what this is right here. You've got the elephant in reverse, the whale in reverse, and this hyena, okay? And I'm going to go with the fact that you see the stars, all the inky black night sky, and then also the moon, the two sides of the moon. There's something about you. Um, bottom of the deck here is the wolf parting the fire and walking through. It's almost like divining. You could be a really strong, powerful diviner. Um, you could be an astrologer that can look at the position of the, the stars. Uh, know what time it is from the position of the sun in the sky. Like you don't even need a sundial. Um, that's the kind of energy I'm getting here. Someone who's very awed by life itself, by the actual planetary movements, um, by the movements of humans within their own clique of friends and family about the movement of somebody's psychology over the course of your life there's somebody very um curious here that's very much in awe of something that they're finding or something that they've come across gemini this could be your energy this is top of the reading right here i just took it off okay vulture is right underneath so you that could be the energy i'm kind of feeling is something like just be careful Whatever it is that you're busy buzzing around or busy pollinating or whatever, be really careful. Like, watch your back because there could be some vultures that are not so happy for this. Like, if this bee was the center of your attention, I'm just seeing all this blue inky energy, right? And if you know who inky and inlo are, then I'm talking about that. Look at all this blue inky energy that's just circling the bee. Okay. If that's your object of interest right there, you, you need to be careful that this ink doesn't get on your fingers. It's almost like those things they put in clothing, those ink. Um, they're supposed to deter people from their, their little security devices is what they, and they punch them onto your clothes. And at the front desk, they got to run them through a machine to take them off. Um, that's almost what this is here. Just be, be careful of like, I know something's really amazing or I know something's really awing to you. Like this is a big deal. 
whatever this is, it's not it's not a small deal. This is a big deal. It could be something so small as like, Horton, here's a who. Like you found the cure to cancer, the cure to AIDS, like something huge that's really on a, a tiny underneath a petri dish, right? Could be something like that, but just be careful about your role, your level of interaction in this. And I don't know what it is about that. All I can tell you is that bumblebees have stingers and they really freaking hurt. It does not kill certain bees to sting you multiple times. There's paper wasps. They uh, they clamp down and then they drag their teeth. There's bumblebees. They don't die after they sting you. That's honeybees. Honeybees are the ones that sting you and then they're out of here. There's also wasps who can just bite you with their mouth as many times as they want. So just be careful. If you don't know everything about this, like, I don't know why I felt the need to go through all those caveats on how different species sting things. There's something about the intricacy, the way it's packaged, the way it's wound up around itself. It's almost like there's a jack-in-the-box kind of, like, that could be the shock and awe kind of surprise at the very end. There's something about this that you just need to, like, just, eh. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, feelers up. That's all I can tell you, okay? Go, I'm sticking with my story. Gemini. Feelers. Oh, God. Okay? Let's get the... Uh, I, I'm sorry. I grabbed the wrong deck. I'm trying to get a storyline here. You got the animals input. So keep your... This is what I'm saying. Keep both eyes open when you sleep around this one. Unless this is your energy. And then other people need to keep their both eyes open because whatever is going on behind those eyes is very deep very very deep okay yeah there it goes this is like your eyeball and this is reflections of like you're very fixated on something and i feel like i feel like once you get on the serengeti you're about to try to going to be one of those, um, you know, wildlife channel slow motion chases where there's a lot of zigzagging across the Sahara, okay? Mm -hmm. Let me just get this out so I can see every part of uh, or what I can see. Interesting. Okay. Let me show you how this came out. Whatever it is that is uh, this sunlight, right? You see it. At, I'm, I'm sticking with the astrological layout that came out with these three cards. So this is the sun card. And there's something about Under the Tuscan Sun. I'm seeing that movie, Under the Tuscan Sun. Um, there's a new doorway that you're going to have an opportunity to move through, to step into, to explore, if you will. You are going to need to do that in a way that enriches yourself and the community around you. If you've seen that movie, Under the Tuscan Sun, it's about a woman who has a midlife crisis, basically, and everything falls apart. She moves across the world and basically has to reinvent herself. It's a... Uh, kind of akin to how Stella found her groove or got her groove back, you know? Um, that, that's like when she found her groove and she lost it, then Stella got it back, right? Okay. This right here is you stepping into a whole new world. Okay, you know that part of Aladdin where he's trying to get over the fence, but Raja's in there like, ah, I'll kill you. That's kind of what this is. This, uh, you've been wiser for the wear is what I want to say. Whatever you've been carrying, it's really tattered you. Um, your happiness is going to change in the way that it looks if you, as soon as you step through this door. There will be a small piece of knowledge, a small growth, um, an understanding. It could happen somewhere around Christmas. I'm seeing a Christmas tree or in the summer. 
But either way it goes, um, as soon as you open or unlock this door somehow, then you'll be able to stoke your own fire or create your own kind of um, astrological mysticism, if you will. Right here is you, I'm not even going to lie, Gemini, you might have lost your temper a little bit. You might have said, oh my God, like staring into the, that's what scares a lot of people when they think about deep space or the afterworld or the afterlife, what comes after death is a whole bunch of inky black, just what if there's just nothing but inky blackness, okay? I don't mean that you've lost your temper in a way that you're like screaming and yelling. That's why this is in reverse. I mean it in a way where that is what was the catalyst for you needing this change. The, it, this was the catalyst for the midlife crisis. Was you not being able to see much else or maybe your own mortality. You know, I'm not being able to envision a future with um, or alongside or in this specific scenario, whatever, however that applies to you, Gemini, um, you you weren't able to read into very much prosperity one way or another. I don't know why I'm hearing I'm going to find you. I'm going to get you, get you, get you, get you. It's almost like going into freshman year of college, not knowing what you want your major to be. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it feels. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely right. This is the way that the uh, powers that be... <laughs> make you feel from the moment you've got to take your first ACT test all the way through the time until you graduate from whatever PhD, um, BA, uh, MA program you might have come from, right? You, you need to be better than a grade B, okay? You got to be an A. If you're not an A, you're a B. Okay, and to be called a B to your face is not very nice. Okay, just saying. For some people, perfectionists. Okay? You might be a perfectionist, Gemini, and you got a B on something and you're like, on an astrology test. And you're like, what? This is that shock and awe moment that I was talking about in the beginning. Did you just get your homework back? And you're like, how did I not ace this? I don't know. This is also you finding under the peak, under the microscope, something incredible. <gasps> oh my God. Okay. Um, there's that moment. There's a sci-fi movie about a group of astronauts that go out into space and they find this tiny little alien thing and they don't think much of it. It's like a worm. Nothing big, right? At first. But then it starts consuming people on the ship, like things and people and growing at rapid, like, exponential rates, eventually ends up killing everybody. But this was the original, at first, they were really excited. Look what we found. They put it in its own little enclosure, try to make it a pet, and quickly find out that that is not a pet. That is not a pet. That's the end of the movie, by the way. It does make it back to Earth, but that's where it cuts off. So I guess we'll never know what happens. Anyway, Gemini, um, let me go ahead and get one more set of clarifiers just for the heck of it. Just because we like to be efficient like that. I'm going to use clarifiers from the brighter weight. Did I mention under the Tuscan sun? This is childlike energy. This was an offer to give you the tusk without the sun. Okay. As soon as you walk through that little blue doorway there, you're going to have the sun. You're going to have the sun. If you were Aladdin and you finally got through that door past Raja, you're sitting up here 
patrolling place, right? As soon as you get over that wall to Jasmine, you're good. I, <laughs> you're good. That Jasmine is your happiness. She is your sunlight in a world full of mundane darkness. Okay. Ah, oh, there's Jasmine. Okay. She's Princess Yin to your Yang. Okay. That's what this is. Um, you just need to push yourself. Like, don't you don't even have to have a midlife crisis if that's not what this is for you. You just need to maybe push yourself a tiny bit harder to go through the door that fits yourself and what you need to achieve. And I feel like you'll know exactly what this doorway is. It's a new opportunity, a new person, a new place, a new thing. It could be literally anything. Here's looking. I don't know why, but all those stars in the inky black sky. They just showed up out of nowhere. Literally, you were looking up into the sky, looking for a, a sun, sunlight coming from anywhere, motivated by this inky blackness. And then out of the blue, once you walk through this door, boom, like all the, this is maybe going up to the mountains and camping so that you no longer have the, the light pollution. All of a sudden, you're going to see every single, this is the 10 of pentacles. You're going to see 10 stars really bright all up in the sky. Which is not something that you would have been able to see had you not taken that chance to go through that door. Okay? And that door doesn't, it doesn't have to do with what you say, what you think, what you do. Everyone feels some type of way when they look at the grandeur of the universe. And if they don't, then they don't. Okay, that's their business, their personal business. For you, Gemini, I feel like this is going to be an amazing thing. This is like, um, this is literally comet showers. This is an asteroid shower. This is whole bunch shooting stars like all over the place. No, it's not coming from the dragon's mouth. It's coming from above. Maybe if there's like dragons descending on us and like, the Doctor Who egg of the moon hatches and an entire dragon comes out of it like <sighs> and descends on the earth, then yeah, we'll have to go ahead and figure out how to time time jump then. Um time leap, but I time jump leap, whatever. Uh anyway, this is not something that we have ever seen before. We don't have any context for what happens when we see the backside of the moon suddenly rotate towards us and start giving birth to a dragon. We have no concept of what to do when all of a sudden out of nowhere, 10 eerie lights show up directly above our city with all the city pollution and everything. We don't know, we don't have any knowledge about UFOs. We don't have any knowledge about alien life forms coming to visit. We don't know if they're inside the planet, outside the planet, in the moon, in the stars. We have no clue. This is the level of, of um, adventuristic exploration that your curiosity has pushed you to, you've now discovered some type of happiness that resides just out of your reach. And it's because you don't have the, inf the additional information for you to understand what it is you're looking at. You have no clue what you're looking at. So this is fascinating and all good and well, as long as things go your way. Gemini. And I'm just going to tell you that unless you can be really efficient with figuring out that arrival, decoding of any kind of language, voynich mechanism you can, real quick, fast, and energy, yeah, I probably, like, I don't know what this is going to grow into, but just given that we, um, that we have so much to learn about this planet that we've been living on for hundreds and thousands of years at this point, we still don't understand most of the species or most of the life forms that have either been here, are here, or will be here. Unfortunately, we're on the are here right here, right now. And um, if these Things are here. 
We are going to learn about them. Trust me, whether you want to or not, you're going to go through that door. What you observe versus what you know, you're going to have to use your eyes and make sure that your irises are not playing tricks on you. Irises are not just your eyes. They're also flowers, by the way. A type of flower. That's what I'm saying is there that you might need to use some abstract thinking to figure out how to get your shot. Because I don't think you're going to shoot anybody but yourself in the foot if you miss. It's kind of like having that one shot at bringing back alien life. If you let it eat you before you get back to, you know, Earth, it's kind of a problem. Whatever that was, I don't know what's going on with y'all, Gemini. Um, are y'all dealing with, like, strange alien entities? I don't know if I'm hearing Little Wayne John. If you never heard that song. It's a uh, strange entities have been identified and, or cannot be identified and have arrived. It's really funny. Just go listen to it. This is one for the road. Divine Guidance. Yeah, use your better. Damn. I don't know if I like it or love it or hate it when that happens. There's divine judgment coming out twice. It was like this. You guys are reflecting Aquarius energy. Go watch Aquarius because this came out with them two, with two different cards. There's only multiples of a couple cards in this deck and both of them have shown up for air signs. So there's something about the air sign um, people, species of human that are born in air sign you know, formations. Y'all are coming into a different rotational cycle. Your rotation is about to change. That's really weird. Yeah, the way that you move through life is about to change for some reason. I don't know how. Or the way that you perceive life. The ethers, the heavens above. There's something that's about to change for you in a really big way. And I don't know what that is. And I don't know what the catalyst is going to be. You will know. Yeah, I just said it. This is right underneath those two is change. Number 35. So I'm going to leave that there, Aquarius. Hopefully it was helpful.